Israel claims it owes no obligations to Gaza residents. On September 12, 2005, Israel completed its disengagement plan by removing Israeli settlements and evacuating permanent military installations from Gaza. Upon that completion, Israel declared an end to the military government that had administered the Gaza Strip since Israel's capture of the territory in 1967. Three days later, in a speech before the United Nations General Assembly, Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon declared the end of Israeli control over and responsibility for the Gaza Strip. While at the time Israel refrained from declaring an end to the occupation, since then, in a series of statements made in Hebrew before Israel's Supreme Court, the government of Israel has expressed the position that disengagement extinguished its legal obligations toward Gaza, thus leaving the running of Gaza and the fulfillment of obligations vis-a-vis Gaza residents to the sole responsibility of the Palestinian Authority. Despite disengagement, Israel retains control over Gaza's land crossings, including complete control of the entrance of foreigners and imports, as well as ultimate control of the entrance and exit of all persons and goods by virtue of the ability to close all crossings into Gaza. Under the terms of the November 15, 2005 Agreement on Movement and Access entered into by Israel and the Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian Authority operates Rafah Crossing under the supervision of European Union monitors present at the crossing and Israeli security officials who monitor the operations by live video footage and supervision of passenger lists. Travel into Gaza from Egypt via Rafah is restricted to Palestinians registered in the Israeli-controlled Palestinian Population Registry. Therefore, foreigners may enter Gaza only via Israeli-controlled crossings in the north. Israel also exercises ultimate control of the entrance into and exit from Gaza of all persons, including Palestinian ID card holders, and has used that control periodically to close Gaza to the outside world. Israeli consent and cooperation are required for Rafah crossing to be open because the agreement for opening the crossing requires the participation of Israeli, Palestinian and European Union officials. Israel also controls whether European Union monitors will reach Rafah by issuing security warnings telling the European Union monitors whether Rafah may open. Reports and internal military documents suggest that Israel has used the closure of the crossing to exercise pressure on Gaza residents in order to bring about the return of the Israeli soldier captured on June 25, 2006. Indeed, in the first year following the completion of its disengagement program, Israel kept Rafah crossing closed for 148 days, meaning that Gaza was cut off from the outside world 42% of the time. Israel completely controls the import of goods into Gaza and exercises substantial control over exports from Gaza to third countries and to the West Bank. Israel has imposed severe restrictions on imports which have, at various points, 
cause shortages of basic goods that threaten the health and welfare of Gaza residents. Since occupying Gaza in 1967, Israel has exercised complete and exclusive control of Gaza's airspace and territorial waters. There is no airport or seaport in Gaza and no passage for people or goods into Gaza via the sea or air. Israel controls movement within the Gaza Strip through sporadic troop presence and artillery fire from positions along its borders with Gaza. Since June 2006, Israeli troops have operated continuously in Gaza, including along Gaza's border with Egypt. Israel controls a northern section of the Gaza Strip, where it declared in December 2005 a no-go zone by warning residents that they will be shot if found in that area. Additional no-go zones within the Gaza Strip are occasionally declared by Israel. The definition of who is Palestinian and who is a resident of Gaza and the West Bank is controlled by the Israeli military. Even when Rafah crossing is open, only holders of Palestinian ID cards can enter Gaza through the crossing. Therefore, control of the Palestinian population registry is also control over who may enter and leave Gaza. Since 2000, with few exceptions, Israel has not permitted additions to the Palestinian population registry. As a result, tens of thousands of Gaza residents, including women who entered Gaza on visitors' permits and married Gaza residents, are living in Gaza but cannot receive Palestinian ID cards. Thus, they are trapped in Gaza. If they leave, they will not be permitted to return. Israel controls the tax system in the territories of the Palestinian Authority, with the exception of direct taxes such as income tax and some kinds of value-added and customs taxation. This system affects civilian life in Gaza, including the ability of non-profit organizations to receive tax-exempt donations of equipment or materials. Israel exercises control over the ability of the Palestinian Authority to provide services to Gaza and West Bank residents and the functioning of its governmental institutions, including by control over the transfer of tax revenues, which amount to 50% of the Palestinian Authority's operating income. Moreover, Gaza and the West Bank constitute two parts of a single territorial unit with a unified and undifferentiated system of civilian institutions spread throughout Gaza and the West Bank, funded from the same central budget and run by the same undifferentiated central authority. Therefore, Israel's continued direct control of the West Bank is a form of indirect control over Gaza. Israel's contention that withdrawal marks the end of its obligations vis-à-vis -vis residents of Gaza is founded upon an overly narrow understanding of occupation in the terms of international law as being defined exclusively by the continuous presence of troops in a given territory. Occupation, in fact, has long been understood in terms of the ability to exercise effective control over a territory, a concept that is intimately linked with 
but not entirely dependent upon military ground presence in the territory. The situation in Gaza indicates that Israel does exercise effective control over significant aspects of life in Gaza and thus in the areas in which it exercises such control Israel owes obligations to Gaza residents under the international humanitarian law of occupation. Such responsibility will continue until Israel cedes effective control.